Welcome to this brainstorm and mind map uh, for the market synergies, um, symbiotic leverage and the commons ecology um, of the new complementary currency that we're trying to design uh, for the Swedish market. So uh, we need to conduct some market research down here, um, I think Halmstad, Borstad and Engelholm uh, for local towns and communes, larger regional centres in this area are Lund, Malmö, Helsingborg um, and then the nearest capital to here is Copenhagen. Um, Obviously another capital up in Stockholm and there are regional towns around or dormitory towns to Stockholm. Uh, Oslo and Helsinki, we can talk about the possibility of uh, recruiting people we know in Finland and Norway um, to see if an overarching uh, Scandic, Scandic's region um, cooperative or club or whatever we decide to go um, uh, can be done so I mean I, I've been thinking about different kind of buzzwords for what we've got you know, capital coin uh, score on a coin commune coin um, I came up with four C's which is a crypto um, Crypto Complementary Currency Club, the four C's. Uh, we'll see that later as we go through the uh, through the slides. Um, so, effectively, what I've been thinking about is with the cryptocurrency. Um, I'm interested in a thing called jamurage, which means the uh, there's lower penalties or no penalties for spending credit sooner. The longer you hold on to it, the less it is worth. Um, now, with coupled with the discount scheme, the discount in the demurrage can be quite a powerful uh, no cost to the user of the currency, um, just a benefit that declines and it would still be one for one. Um, we'll come to that later. Uh, use of discount seams and a currency with demurrage could be useful for off-peak openings, special openings for members using the currency, a payment of overtime to staff for that special opening, um, issue of discount coupons and competitions and whatnot for, for, for staff within the organisations that are using the coin. Uh, so I, I did a couple of conceptual diagrams for that which we'll come on to. So the businesses, you have staff, owners, shareholders, customers, suppliers, business memberships, individual memberships, consumer users and customer um, trade membership. Uh, so. In terms of uh, the idea of demurrage, uh, what we have here is um, if you spend the tokens going this way, you can see what we have there is uh, demurrage. So the uh, the quicker you spend them, the higher the discount. Um, so they get spent in the merchants to the customers and then they can settle up with trade creditors over here now trade creditors and their collateral if that's monetized to back the um, spending tokens up here uh, then they will want some sort of compensation for that well there's the one compensation is in increased trade um, but also uh, they may want to use it as a store of value um, and this is where 
the interest comes into it. So here we have interest charges coming out here, uh, as well as payments coming across, and then that's sort of going up here. So there's a sort of a, a loop coming back there. Um, and then down here somewhere, you uh, you probably have customers. So if we just put, I can't write very nicely with this pen, cuss. Customers. Actually, it's beginning to look a bit like Greek, isn't it? <laughs> Right, custom. <laughs> right, okay, customers. So that's what that's about. And then looking out more widely now, <clears throat> this illustration I sent this yesterday at the end of a document and then did a brainstorm. Um, and just to explain this, uh, I'm imagining uh, three geographies, uh, which is uh, the communes and smaller centres I've mentioned earlier, the regional centres and the capitals. Uh, so they're all um, encompassed kind of with a international sort of federation. Uh, and then there are sub-markets for the towns, Lund, Halmstead, Borstad, Engelholm just as an example, the capitals, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Oslo, uh, Helsinki, we could even think about St. Petersburg in Russia as well, or and, and indeed Hamburg, uh, one of the ideas I was thinking of was the old Hanseatic League uh, and uh, the historical trade links between Oslo, Stockholm, St. Petersburg, Hamburg, Lübeck, uh, I mean, even one of the Polish coastal towns, uh, there's a historical um, trading currency that was used there. I've, I've actually got a research paper on it. Um, now, but, but you get the idea that you've got this overarching federation and and that they're using a token which they can use to keep the liquidity between themselves and iron out cash flow uh with business that they're doing with people outside of the uh the membership of of the club so to speak uh other people in geographies that we're going to be interested in are um Inverted investment organisations uh, in government, local government, central government, perhaps political parties, uh, other sort of organisations, say Positive Pengana or, um, you know, other, other maybe academics, universities. In fact, you know, within a student body somewhere like Lund where there are loads and loads of students um, or up in Stockholm. I mean, Uppsala, there's a real um, possible synergy with student unions and things like that um, to to uh, get such a currency going, especially with the discount and demurrage kind of thing, because it will, you know, increase the buying power of uh, of their student economy, you know, consider quite considerably f for people that want to go into the club and 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 attract. Um, uh, you know, younger people and build a client base, as it were. So that's the geographies and those considerations there. Uh, then there's the symbiotic populations within each of the geographies, um, so at different scales. Uh, so you've got businesses uh, who are retail or dealing with the general public, uh, public who are customers over here. Then you have trade suppliers, so that's business-to-business -business stuff. So trade suppliers don't deal direct with the general public, uh, but members, because, you know, obviously will trade amongst themselves. Um, now, then there are sort of trade associations 
Um, so it's possible that we would promote to their different members through trade associations uh, and by doing marketing promotions and whatnot, um, you can issue, uh, you know, a special token which can be uh, used in conjunction with some of our four C's currency uh, and with kroners or whatever the fiat is in the local geography. Um, that's something which... Uh, uh, Bernard Latier deals with in, in one of the papers that I sent through earlier. Um, so, for instance, for some offers uh, or promotions um, or in general, uh, a retailer may for one week sort of say, well, you can buy a whole, you know, we're offering all of our product lines for purchase 100 percent in the four c's currency um ordinarily uh you know maybe they'll do that once a month maybe they'll do it once a year or one week in every year uh other times that, that they may want to sort of say well actually we will um you you can pay for a quarter of your purchases in that kind of currency um that's really depending on how, how much trading outside of the local economy they do and their need for that additional fiat money. The trick is um, that uh, we're going to design it in such a way that the units are convertible back for one for one to um, uh, the local currency, fiat currency much as the Bristol pound is. Um, and so it's the discounts and the speed with which they get, you know, the liquidity uh, that that they offer, and also a, a bridging kind of liquidity for the uh, where where say um, a customer outside of the the club is paying in fiat currency, and they they, they take longer to pay. So there are various ways of um, engineering added value into the cryptocurrency within the uh, symbiotic populations. So each of these symbiotic populations exists within each of these boxes up here. That, that's the way to look at it. And then, as a whole, the population has these sorts of relationships, um, except they're going between... Uh, boundaries um, which are uh, local boundaries regional boundaries and then ultimately national boundaries uh, and so thinking of it that way um, it's a question of designing the four C's currency the, the crypto comp complementary currency uh, to have certain advantages and benefits uh, at the micro end of the scale up to the macro end of the scale which I think is what I, I come up to later so um, at the back of my mind with all of this I've been thinking a lot about loyalty cards loyalty point schemes the possibility of collateralizing um, credit limits limits or credit terms that exist already between uh, symbiotic local businesses discount clubs privilege cards all of those sorts of things um, now there are marketing advantages and a kind of a cryptographic discount that can be built into uh, particularly the Ethereum blockchain. And we need to be thinking about um, where those possibilities give an edge to a member of the scheme 
to encourage customers to buy their product now and kind of front end the purchase in the sense that they use this very liquid local complementary currency which really helps with the cash flows of the local businesses so it helps both with cash flow but also turnover and generating more activity so part of these points i mean i make them briefly uh, but part of the benefit of thinking through these things is we can uh, hone down the list to a good uh, of what our real strong strongest points are to see where our niche is um, so I mean I've been thinking about property purchase chains like when when people buy a house in England for instance um, usually one sale is contingent on another happening and another and sometimes a whole deal can fall apart apart because at one part of that chain uh, there's a lack of funds and so you you have the estate agents or the uh, solicitors if they're any good uh, ringing everybody else up and down this whole chain to see if they can get a little bit off here a little bit off there so that the whole so the transaction still can go through um, Another way that that is sometimes done is by bridging finance, where people go and get a short-term loan from a bank. Well, that's really very vi- risky, um, but the the blockchain and the Ethereum authentication thing and the possibility of providing um, a centralised insurance point um, whereby... Uh, there's a, 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 a service for unblocking blockages in property transaction chains, which in residential, I'm sure they happen. They must happen in Sweden too. It, it, it's more efficient here, but but um, it, it, that that's a potential uh, idea that if we were doing this as a say a currency for estate agents in britain that would be a good idea and we need to think of similar things that apply to sweden um uh so i mean the other thing i had was collective investment broking at the end of last year i obviously was looking at at the swedish property market and looking at different ways of mutualizing investment uh, for that and of course these are all things that can be done um but the big opportunity, I think, is in Sweden, with Sweden phasing out cash, because complementary currencies will be more important than ever when, uh, when when cash is phased out. So, obviously, we've looked at the Weir Bank in Switzerland and the Bristol Pound, um, and we've obviously got an idea now which we need to communicate uh, to potential members the benefits of a complementary currency within those uh, local economic ecologies if you like Um, so I then broke it. I've, I've broken it down in my own mind to thinking about tiers of of of, of the uh, of the coin, um, and then also with the weir. One of the things about the weir is that it's not available to international businesses or multinational corporations, um, and it's really a bank that's aimed at small to medium sized enterprises. You know, which is great. Um, and it's a, a question really of the bigger businesses uh, kind of act as an can act as an anchor to collateralize the the complementary currency or the cryptographic complementary currency and if that currency is to uh, sort of gain traction and value as as a money for liquidity that's that's fairly easy but um, by having a second tier which is based 
as on a store of value. Um, what I've my thought experiment is to collateralize the strong credit side from the larger, longer standing, richer businesses. Uh, they benefit from the liquidity because it helps their customers to um, and speeds up their inventory and cash flow and what have you. Um, but there's also another potential benefit there to offer uh, savings or loans to business startups and the P2P, B2B um, credit type of thing at, at lower rates of interest. Um, but nonetheless, still at rates of interest that are very competitive to those that are available uh, in, in regular regular banking. So it's, it's uh, you know, uh, w what we're really talking about is um, uh, really solid um, uh, annuity type of incomes uh, which are not high risk. So uh, grandma friendly, um, uh, retirement friendly, uh, solid investments, so stuff that a um, actuary would find um, uh, acceptable. So um, it's a question of leveraging that collective local economic ecology uh, and then um, as we're looking to sort of get an overarching sort of confederation of these things and what that then does is it provides a, a, a well a capital base from which uh, external benefits can be brought into the membership uh, from you know the the wider world as it were it, uh, but like group discounts is a, is the idea behind that um, by by increasing your bulk purchasing power it gives access to economies of scale and discounts at scale uh, and that is is much more possible to coordinate through a blockchain type application because people make the commitment and back the commitment up and that's time stamped and guaranteed and the escrow possibilities are such that you are negotiating with the money in the bank as it were you become a, like a cash purchaser and, and, and again um, that is uh, an opportunity for some people to invest in that bulk purchase and the discount and then the spoils if you like divided up between the people who've gone and sell the stuff and the people who provide the liquidity uh, and that doesn't have to be one person um, and all of those benefits generally speaking get gobbled up by very high bank fees bank charges interest rates for short-term borrowing uh, Effectively, because they have a monopoly on credit secured against your own collateral, uh, and and so that's that's the way to start thinking about developing a core of of uh, services that the club will offer to its wider membership at the different levels of scale in the ecology diagram. Uh, so that's really the confederation of clubs, regions, national, international networks. Um, Demurrage, uh, interest to savers, etc. That's that circular diagram uh, that that we just did. Um, so I've covered those points there. So. Um, There are further thoughts, research and uh, pros and cons needed considering with regard to cooperative structures, federated structures, whether it's for profit or not for profit um, and uh, 
Mondragon Corporation is a federated cooperative. They do do finance as well. Um, and uh, they don't, well, they do look at startups. And I, I mean, it's not impossible that they would look at look at this once we've sort of uh, ironed out the the uh, or hammered out rather our our strategy here so then this is my two tier idea of a tiered currencies so all cryptocurrencies ether bitcoins they're divided down into uh, into different units like bitcoins, you have uh, a, a whole bitcoin, and it's then down to satoshis, and they're, they're divided down into ever smaller numbers. Ether is has gotten um, one of the units is a way or a we we i. One of them is a a sabo. Um, there are two schools of thought on who Satoshi was. One school of thought was this Sabo guy and, and the other school of thought was it was this Dr. Wright guy, the Australian guy. Um, I don't know who it is, it doesn't really much matter does it, but, but uh, um, what I was thinking rather than uh, thinking of the units as uh, proportions of the reference unit or divisions of the reference unit, uh, the our, our tiered coin can denote liquidity um, whereby you have the liquid coins that you spend and you have the deposit coins that you that you save and the one kind of backs the other and the liquid coins have the demurrage and the deposit coins have uh, a rate of interest coming in uh, or a, a share of profits coming in which is based on the you know the demur the the demurrage um, margin that you know some people holiday makers for it, for instance might everybody ends up with change at the end of a holiday though don't they so at scale it's something that needs to be mo modelled in terms of uh, how that would how that how, how that works and how one would complement the other as it were so. Um, actually, let's just go back again here because I'm, I'm not. Uh, my idea with the liquid coins is that um, if someone has a hundred kroners, say they come on holiday to Engelholm, so they convert their hundred kroners into Engelholm crypto complementary currency uh, coins, uh, and they get 115,000 kroners of credit in return for that 100 kroners in cash. Uh, and that level of credit with the demurrage, okay, uh, it, it represents a discount. So a holiday maker comes for a week. If they spend what they take out in all the week, all, everything is at a 15% discount where, where that's accepted by the members uh, the, the, the second week third week and fourth week it goes down and then in the second month it's basically just back to, to parity um, but so, so there's an incentive to hold one the angle home coin but two to spend it more quickly and that also apply it, it means that people won't you know this idea of hoarding coins or holding coins or saving those coins the quicker you spend them the more you get that's the idea of demurrage um, so uh, then the second is the tier two deposit coins and that those those aren't something that you would spend they were something that you would save and um, the reason I've got these term deposits here one two or five years is from this point of view of it may well be that for a regional anchor say a supermarket like Ica they could become part of the scheme but because there's a risk with a bigger anchor like maybe say Lidl's or something like that as well because they their headquarters are in 
it's probably not in Germany, is it? It's in Liechtenstein or something. Uh, so they do take their profits out. Uh, what what they would have to deposit uh, the fiat currency and agree that that stays in that deposit and that will be used then to, to back the liquidity of the coins. Um, that That's the idea there and it's still a work in progress but I wanted to put it out there so we could all think about that. Uh, right then. Um, what am I saying here? So this tier two fiat term deposits uh, cooperative members that wish to extend credit or their credit worthiness into their supply chains because it provides liquidity to their um, to their customers so that they basically increase their own turnover and the um, the inventory or, or how quickly that turns over in their accounts as well uh, accounts payable is it will, will be lower so um, it gives access to a more liquid local market uh, this is the anchor corporate membership point and the points I'm making are kind of all in here and I'm trying to explain the the general framework of these ideas that I'm throwing out because that hopefully will spark other better ideas um, so that we can come up with something you know strong original and uh, applicable to a Swedish context and a local context to different places in Sweden and in achieving that it becomes a much easier sell um, to to recruit membership uh, so factoring is a business in banking which increases liquidity for a firm but it's very very expensive so part of the research we need to do is to see what 30-day credit terms 90-day credit terms 120-day credit terms are available in the market and what sort of discount rates are paid applied to the factoring there um, and it's the sort of question that is answered in the LTA um, employment and local currency paper which I sent before uh, so we need to look at coll the collateralized credit um, so th the larger or the richer people that uh, extend their credit or people that take that credit where there's the possibility of providing security backing up uh, their receipt of that credit uh, that will obviously at scale so that could be secured on property on stock, stock or working capital sort of thing um, and then we need to look at reputation authentication and credit scoring uh, and that again is something uh, on Ethereum where lots of interesting things can be done um, or, I mean I'm saying Ethereum because it's the blockchain is there and so you we can come up with these ideas and the actual network of computers that compute the algorithms to lock in those contract promises um, basically is, is, is there so um, you know we can make a very feature rich discount credit union club type thing uh, in an, in the individual markets and actually uh, brand particular types of tokens uh, and of course because the tokens available on people's phones they have them on their phone therefore outreach to customers again is 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 incredibly interactive and it that allows for really proactive selling uh for the retail oriented general public oriented people like, like a coffee shop or a cake shop or a baker's a bookshop you know so on so forth i mean uh it's really knocking doors and going down high streets, really. Um, so, no, actually, I've, uh, I've just sort of, you know, those types of shops, repairs, 
for surprise, you know, like breakages and stuff, leisure stores, activities, B and B's, hotels, restaurants, bars, club. I mean, I've, I've just tried to start throwing out, uh, you know, visualizations to start sparking off some. Uh, um, some synergies I mean I don't want to sound like a dictionary as I'm going along this, this is actually a, a good hidden secrets of money wall chart uh, it's not 100% correct and how money is created even in the US which it's designed to show uh, it's this step 4 here which is uh, slightly in the videos he, he gets this right this idea of the the bank multiplier is just bogus now. There's a link further on to positive money if you look at that. Uh, banks are the you know banks are just originators of loans. It's it's got nothing to do with um, needing deposits or uh, that's one way that it could be done. But it's almost in fact never been done that way. But but uh, it's a good diagram in that it shows how IOUs are circulated. Um, and uh, you know where you've got interest and commissions and fees and whatnot going back and forth. It's, it's just it's got a nice representation of it. Um, so I've done this slide on the money creation process because it's really key to recruiting <laughs> members because um, money is an IOU uh, and bank credit or bank deposit money is an IOU which is secured against your own your own credit your own collateral the bank have usually less skin in the game than you do most people don't know that um, and when you tell most entrepreneurial business owners uh, and then give them a, a possibility of, 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 of getting some of the benefit of their own credit worthiness uh, it's it's actually a pretty compelling, um, you know, uh, proposition. So the rationale behind complementary currencies uh, is that it uses the group's credit terms um, and to promote the joint interests of liquidity and whatnot within the community without leakages, uh, and to explain that one has to have access to an idea of what the money creation process is it's basically the same in sweden as it is in england um, and with the phasing out of cash that's a really big big selling point for us um, uh, even with this swishing you know because banks they're monopolies they're greedy and and, and historically they do that you know they, because they've been monopolies they're although they claim they give a very good and efficient service um it's that's true up to a point but uh they basically milk it and also as bernard Latier says with increased efficiency becomes less uh less robustness if you like so here we are I've, I've kind of made a list of 10 bullet points um, for the crypto complementary currency cooperative idea could be coin the last C you know remains to be uh, decided amongst ourselves cooperative corporation I mean I, I'm fairly sanguine myself but but it's just to uh, start putting some hooks there for us to start hanging different hats on and see what what fits and what suits so benefit from leverage of own credit um, credit on favorable terms and to new entrants startups uh, so it can you know basically uh, banks just aren't doing that anymore um, very little of it anyway and what they do do is very expensive so counter cyclical effects to the wider market uh, we're a bank example cross-selling and economies of scale in marketing and the online marketplace not just in marketing but also in purchasing um, 
possible implementation th implementation through phone apps, uh, Android, Apple. Uh, I like those recyclable block phones, but but uh, again, in terms of implementation, uh, hand phones are a really good thing because most people have them, uh, and it's then just a question of scanning uh, the the barcodes and stuff. Uh, federation into affiliated markets a membership uh, so that means that if you're in a, a local level you have access to a wider network if you're big and it's difficult for you to deal at smaller things that at smaller levels uh, because we've got these organized groups of people it, it can kind of make the scale of business worthwhile for someone larger. That's the idea there. Um, interaction and support of online presence with websites and e-commerce. This kind of leads into things like the virtual sales presentation, streaming video, the blockchain variability, um, all, all of that. Um, because of the complementary currency and that's being provided, uh, it gives access to blockchain. What's it called? It's called a knowledge pool, isn't it, or whatever? So uh, it's it's the knowledge pool in the 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 the, uh, the community um, that is available. Uh, we can point. Oops, a daisy. We can point to the success of the Bristol Pound, Ithaca Hours, uh, Wearbank. I mean, on the Bernard Latier site, they're all listed the complementary currency on um, Coin Wars. All of the different cryptocurrencies are listed. Further on, all the peer to peer lending type things are, are listed in a future slide. Um, the report from last year about the growth in the peer-to-peer -peer market. Uh, this is a growth area. Um, this is banking's monopoly being dismantled effectively. Uh, so it's hugely disruptive to that, but a big, big positive in terms of uh, giving ownership of people's ability to do business with people that they have checked out themselves and like rather than having to be uh, blessed by a highly centralised, highly biased, outside third party, i.e. traditional commercial banks. So that's this point here. Central banks and commercial banks are phasing out cash uh, as well. And so they're, they're giving up well, it's not really their niche. Cash is really the government's niche. <laughs> uh, so they're robbing the government blind in doing that. And why governments are saying OK to it, who knows? Because if they're robbed, it's our money that, that's being robbed. This is from the Bank of Engl England paper on m modern money. So if anyone has a problem, sort of say, oh, hold on again, you know, where's the proof of this? Uh, well, the Bank of England say it there's various other but there's lots of lots of research now and confirmation empirical evidence that this is you know that's how the whole thing works um, but you know these sorts of uh, diagrams are helpful and I, you know what I want to do is start developing a kind of a, a handbook um, so, so that when we pitch end customers uh, you know, there's a handbook that, that we can leave with them or an online kind of magazine type thing which we can produce, you know, as things sort of grow. But but uh, so, so that they, in their own time, can sort of check out the facts. You know, all, all, all of these things are it's, it, it, a, a fact-based this is quite a good diagram of showing how banking works at the moment and the thing that, I mean it's obviously by someone who's really Dick Eastman, I've never heard of him, I found it on the web today it's the Bank of England Rothschild system um, 
I mean, yeah, don't really need to go there. Um, but Bank of England, Reeks Bank, you know, uh, this is this this is how it's done. It's how the ECB does it. It's how the Fed does it, more or less. Uh, and it's it's a nice diagram. I, I like his arrows on that one. Uh, um, then where are we? Um, right, examining the peer-to-peer -peer lending, business-to-business -business lending, and crowdfunding spaces. Uh, obviously, establishing a destination and a uh, crypto complementary currency coin, if you like, the, the tier one complementary currency offers uh, market liquidity. Uh, TT the tier two uh, foresees bonded crypto cash uh, offers possibilities for inward investment through crowdfunding um, third party apps this Bondora thing was just quite an interesting thing they have they they've got good graphics that's the only reason that they've kind of this 20 peer to peer lending pro the graphics are are quite good um, but what this shows is they have a, a platform upon which um, it's kind of this white label type platform where people can do their own branding in specific markets, but it all gets passed back through to the Bondora platform. This is what Ethereum does. Uh, and the it's open source, etc. Um, and it, it's... Uh, well, personally, I think it's very cool. It's, it, it's absolutely ideal for what we've been trying to figure out. Right, so um, the purpose of all of this is to construct a, a, like a conceptual framework and then uh, we can identify the core areas which we can then research further to, to find out on the 80-20 uh, principle which 20% of our effort is going to generate 80% of our profit um, and uh, you know is that going to be person to person business to business tier one currency tier two currency or something else and we need to think about membership fees fee levels whether they're annual whether they're lifetime blockchain or whether they're in um, the crypto cash or whether they're in hard kronos or fiat money uh, blockchain commission structures for mining we need to look at the minting and all of that sort of thing we need to look at demurrage uh, surpluses generated possibilities there we need to look at interest surpluses from the uh, tier 2 side, the demurrage obviously is from the tier 1 side um, and then we need to look at membership or known ownership structures and uh, governance structures again the Ethereum uh, democracies, contracts and all the rest of it quite interesting for some ideas on that then we've just got some uh, clearly if we're in the loan business and all the rest of it we've got to have all this stuff um, so this is just showing how in a traditional loan who does what where and uh, what what gets sort of uh, passed on where and uh, but then that goes into the loan origination process so all these processes can be um, transparent online if you like uh, uh, for example, um, and ag again, people are going to want to know that, that these different traditional type banking due diligence uh, systems are in place, um, and of course, the, of course, they should be. Uh, uh, just some examples there. This this is from the Bondora thing. Just all these different platforms and how big they are for the P2P uh, spaces. We've seen the previous research on all of this, um, but they're nice, nice diagrams with lots of nice arrows. 
Um, this is the Bondora API and third party app party apps I was just talking about. Uh, and that is that.